Frank on here for seconds out with Spencer Oliver. Spencer, was that a bit of a heated discussion talking about Usyk Dubois between you and Gareth A. Davis? Always is between me and Gareth A. Davis because I talk a lot of sense and he doesn't. So, you know, it's, it's what it is. What was the difference of opinion? Was it about uh, Daniel Dubois? No, yeah, the difference of opinion was that I said that we've seen more from Daniel Dubois than we've seen in the past, as in his personality, he's speaking a little bit more, you know, he's, uh, um, and Gareth said, well, no, we've seen a little bit more. I went, sort of what I was saying. That's the point. We've seen more of Daniel Dubois and, you know, he's come out of himself a little bit more. And that's down to Don Charles, by the way. Don Charles has been working with him, not just on the physical side of things, but he's working on the mental side of things as well. And I think he's brought his personality out a little bit more. So, um, yeah, they've been doing a good job. They've been out in Spain, altitude training. They've had some unbelievable sparring. And, um, yeah, they, they, they're confident. They, they, they're really confident going into this. I mean, it's going to be a hostile atmosphere in there, 45 or whatever it is, thousand people in that in, in the where we are today, actually, in the arena. They call it arena, but it's actually a stadium. And it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a, a hostile atmosphere in there. And Daniel's got to deal with all that as well. He's got to be careful he doesn't freeze on the big stage. Alexander Usyk's used to this sort of stuff. And if he gets into a rhythm early, it's going to be a tough night for Daniel. I think Daniel needs to take this as a six-round fight, as in his approach. He needs to start fast. He needs to close a gap with his feet and needs to let those hands go. Because as we've seen in heavyweight boxing before, you know, the, the, the history of heavyweight boxing is steeped in upsets. And, um, you know, Daniel will be trying to do that on Saturday night. And it will be a huge upset. It'll be like, you know, you pull it in there with like, you know, Tyson getting knocked out by Buster Douglas. Lennox getting knocked out by Oliver McCall. Lennox by Hasim Rackman. Even AJ versus Ruiz more recently. You'd pull it there. Like, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a massive task he's got in front of him, Daniel. But they're, they're quietly confident. What do you, what's your assessment of the move to bring in James Harlow Bashir into the camp uh, to help assist Daniel Dwight to defeat Alexander Usyk, his first uh, coach in the pros? Yeah, that's a, that, that's, that's a massive move. That's a massive secret weapon that they had there. I knew about that actually anyway. Um, and yeah, like he's, tra he's trained with Alexander Usyk before, so he's going to know stuff. And I think that's a really good move and um, by the team Dwight. When you look at Alexander Usyk, is he, is he about a complete fighter as you can see right yeah. now in the in the state of boxing? Really? Yeah, definitely. I think that what you've got with Alexander Usyk is this is this is and it's this is going to sound a bit bizarre, but it's true. We still don't actually know how good he is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, if he goes, let's say Alexander Usyk goes and boxes Tyson Fury and he pulls a victory off against Tyson Fury, right? Then where does the where does that rank Alexander Usyk? Not just of the modern era, but of all time greats. Do you know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is we still don't know because he's like, look, when he was going in against Anthony Joshua for the first time, I think the majority of people thought that Anthony Joshua would be too big, too strong and overpower him and overwhelm him. And, you know, the way that he dealt with Joshua was, was impressive. Then in the return, you think, I'll still give Joshua a chance. So I think Joshua, you know, I think he knows what he's got to do. He's got to go in there and he's just got to fight it to him. But that's easier said than done because Usyk is great at controlling the space. You know, and when he controls the space, he makes a fighter work when he's, you know, when he doesn't want to work because he's, you know, he's just out of range. The fighter's going. He comes back. He comes back with shots. He's a, he's, he's a, he's a top quality fighter. He really is. It's going to be a tough night for Dubois for, uh, for sure. You sound confident right now that, look, sure, Dubai has his chance, he'll get his opportunity to upset the odds. But if Usyk does come through this, that Tyson Fury fight will happen this year, early next year, or at all? Yeah, I think that it happens sort of like maybe we, we would probably get that, uh, I don't know, April, May sort of time next year. If, you know, if he comes through on Saturday night. But you do get a feeling that we're getting closer to these fights happening. You know, I think that we're going to see Anthony Joshua versus Wilder. I think we see that in January. And then, you know, um, Usyk, Usyk Fury will possibly follow that as well. So I think we're getting closer to to these guys finally getting it on. It's been a, it's been a frustrating two or three years, really, for boxing fans, you know, with these fights falling through, you know, through the politics of the sport, you know, the money, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, hopefully we're getting closer to that and we get them soon. I just want to get your thoughts on a couple of things. First of all, uh, the recent rank runner results in terms of uh, drug testing positive results. You're yeah. someone who's passionate about yeah. you know, safety of fighters when they step through the ring. Yeah. What are your thoughts on kind of where we stand right now uh, with the current state of drugs in sport? Listen, I, look, you, you know, I've been quite vocal about, you know, you know, drugs within the sport and whatnot. I nearly lost, lost my life in this sport. That's why I'm quite passionate about it. I think we need a level playing field. Too much drugs in the sport right now. Uh, more testing's going on. More people are getting found out. But let's use Alicia Baumgardner. As an example of, you know, what happened, she's failed, failed a drugs test um, the other week. But that drugs test was done three days prior to the fight and got the results back a month after the fight. So that's great. But what happens in the event of that fight, someone gets killed or whatever. But well, then where does that, 
Where does that leave it? Do you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is it's great that we're now getting more testing. Brilliant. But I think when they're tested, then we need to get the results back, obviously, before they get in the ring. Um, but yeah, that's where, that's where we're at with it, really, at the, at the moment. But I'm just glad that, you know, there is more testing going on. And yeah, long may that continue. Do you think things will ever change? I'm, I'm hoping it does, but it needs to for the sake of the sport. It really does for the sake of the sport. Um, we're hearing far too many people doing it right now and things need to change. And, uh, just on to next week as well, uh, Liam Smith versus Chris Eubank Jr. Yes. Uh, Chris Eubank Jr. has looked to uh, take away Roy Jones Jr. from his uh, team and bring yeah. in uh, another trainer. What are your thoughts on that link-up? Yes, I think it's a good move from Eubank Jr. He needed to do that. You know, you can see what he done with Roy Jones. You know, he, he switched off. We've, sorry, Scarf. That's what he does, yeah. yeah. Oh, one minute. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think you needed to invent someone. It's, um, Bomax, you know, he's, he's the right man for the job, maybe. And we'll see. I think we'll see a different fight, by the way, um, you know, with that in a couple of weeks' time. I think we'll see a different fight to the first one. I still think the same person wins. I still think Smith wins. I think it, we will see a different fight to what we saw the first time. I think that Eubank went in there overconfident. You know, he threw his shots, he stayed in the pocket, he switched off. And Liam Smith proved that he's a world-class fighter still uh, by the manner that he, he finished that job. So he's a good fighter, Smith. Um, but it'd be interesting to see how this one goes. It will be different to the first one. Let's go ride catch a picture. Speaking yeah. soon.